Alright guys, another year comes to a close, even though I've had some audio issues throughout this year, I still watched and saw a good amount of movies. And now, just to keep this in mind, this is just my list, and this is how I ranked these films for my list, and I did not unfortunately see every movie this year, or reviewed some of the best movies this year, like The Northman, for instance, and I apologize that I haven't reviewed it, but I did watch it. It's a pretty good movie. I do recommend it, but there are also some films I didn't get a chance to see, like Puss in Boots, The Last Wish, or Avatar, The Way of Water. I still haven't seen those, and hopefully I will one day, either in theaters or at home, when they're either on Disney Plus or Peacock, whichever. Also, grades in this video don't matter. Just because I gave a film a higher grade than the other film doesn't necessarily mean I love it more than the other film. That's not really how it works in this video. Now, before we get into this top 10, I do have a few honorable mentions. These are movies that I did review and loved, and some that I didn't review but also loved, but unfortunately didn't make it on this list. Starting with The Survivor, one of Ben Foster's best performances in recent years, Hustle, a heartfelt basketball story about Adam Sandler trying to get a talented basketball player in the NBA, Fresh, one of the best horror films we have gotten from Hulu, Kimmy, a really good thriller inspired by Rear Window. Now I'll mention a couple of honorable mentions for movies I didn't get a chance to review, but I did watch. The Black Phone, one of the most haunting horror films I have seen all year. The Banshees of Inna Sharon, some of Colin Farrell's and Brandon Gleason's best performances in recent years. And Barbarian, a very unpredictable horror film that a lot of horror fans should watch if they haven't seen it yet. And those are my honorable mentions, but the next 10 I'm gonna mention are even better. Coming in at number 10 is Prey. The Predator franchise isn't one of my favorite franchises of all time. I mean, I do love the original Predator film quite a bit. Not as much as the original Alien, but I still think it's a great movie overall. And this film for me is almost as close as that film. It decided to go back to basics by taking place in an older time period in a Native American location. The main character was interesting, and it had the tension and suspense that a Predator movie should have. Coming in at number 9 is Nope. I'm a fan of Jordan Peele's work on his previous two films, and even though I liked Get Out and Us more, I still thought Nope was a really good alien invasion film. It has a very close encounters of a third kind feel, interesting characters, and a good mix of humor and horror, which is very hard for a movie like this to do. And I gotta give Jordan Peele major props for doing that. Coming in at number 8 is The Unbearable Weight of Massive Talent. I could eat a peach for hours. <laughs> I am a fan of Nick Cage, whether it's his movies that are actually good and some of his films that are unintentionally funny, but I still enjoy watching them. I think he's very entertaining as an actor. And this movie is funny on purpose. It had some humor that worked really well for me. His chemistry with Pedro Pascal is really fun and entertaining to watch, and this is one of the most fun experiences I have had this year. Coming in at number 7 is The Outfit. This is a movie that is one of those films that we really don't get enough of nowadays. It's very claustrophobic, it takes place in a tailor shop from beginning to end. Mark Rylance was fantastic in the film, it has a very threatening villain, and in my opinion, it is the most underrated movie I have seen all year. Coming in at number 6 is Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio. The other two Pinocchio films we've gotten this year were just... No. But this film was great. The animation is phenomenal. The voice acting is genuine. The songs, while at times out of place, are still really good. And the story was very heartfelt. And if you are interested in watching this film, and if you have Netflix, I suggest you watch it there. But also bring a box of tissue paper with you, because... It has some moments that might make you cry. Coming in at number 5 is a comic book film, and we've had a lot of those this year. Most of them were, eh, there were some that I enjoyed, 
And there were some that I wish I could forget. But this one for me is the best one of the whole year. And what I'm talking about is The Batman. I am a huge Batman fan. I love the Nolan trilogy and I love Batman Mask of the Phantasm. And I think this film just might be as good as those films. I liked Robert Pattinson as Batman. The Riddler was a very terrifying Zodiac-like villain that will get you unnerved and scared by. Gotham City was well realized by being dark and grimy like Gotham City should be. I loved almost everything about this film and I can't wait for the Batman 2 whenever that comes out. Coming in at number 4 is Top Gun Maverick. Honestly, I'm not a fan of the original Top Gun. It's shocking, I know. I don't hate it, I just think it's okay. It's not one of my favorite films, I didn't grow up watching it, so I don't really have any nostalgia for it. And man, this one was so much better. Tom Cruise doing his own stunts and real jets, a very touching story that made me care about Maverick and Rooster, and it's a movie that I've constantly been thinking about ever since I first saw it in theaters. Alright, we are now in the top three. Now this next film I'm going to mention may be a little too soon to mention because it just came out recently, but after watching this film, I still think about it and I still think it's amazing. And that movie is Glass Onion, a really good murder mystery film that's very different and unpredictable. The humor and the suspense was mixed very well. Daniel Craig is still awesome in this film just like he was in Knives Out. Janelle Monet is easily the most interesting character in this film and the most sympathetic. I loved it. I want more movies like this and since they've already announced this, I am very excited for a Knives Out 3. Now these last two I've thought about for the past few weeks and I loved both of them and it was very tough for me to pick which one was number one and number two. And then I thought to myself, which one got me in the heart and made me think about it more than the other? <laughs> yeah, this one was pretty tough for me. Number two is RRR. This movie made me care about Rom and Beam's chemistry quite a bit. These two play wonderfully off of each other. The action scenes were very over the top and awesome to watch. And yes, the CGI is noticeable. Yes, most of the fight scenes wouldn't happen in real life, but I don't care. It's still awesome, and the story was very gripping and heartfelt. The facial expressions on the characters is very effective. You understand what they're saying just by the reactions on their faces, and for me, it gets me excited to watch more Tollywood films. Ha! I finally got that name right, and it does get me excited to watch the two Bahu Bali films, and I finally mentioned a good Bollywood or Tollywood film this time. By the way, I'm sorry that I mentioned Zero was a good movie in my review for RRR. I didn't realize that movie was terrible. It's just that someone I knew made it look like it was a good movie and it made me think that way, so I'm sorry that I did that by mistake. And I wanted to mention this just in case I don't get any more people sending me comments about Zero being a bad movie for a long time. Alright, number one, the best one on this list. Now I was going to be RRR and it was this close to getting it, but unfortunately it didn't get it because throughout this year, no other film I have seen has given me more fun or made me laugh so much more than my number one film. And that movie is Everything Everywhere All at Once. This movie has everything I would want to see in a movie like this. An original plot, characters that I can root for, incredibly well shot and choreographed action sequences, and hilarious humor that always made me laugh so hard. Like, without spoiling, just in case, look out for a scene involving a trophy. 
that for me is the funniest moment in the entire movie and i showed this movie to my dad and brother and they had a lot of fun watching it with me it's definitely one of those films that you really don't see every day and this is the kind of movie that dr strange and the multiverse of madness should have been and even though i still enjoyed that film i still think it's a fun movie but for me this multiverse film has more to give and those are my top 10 favorite movies of 2022 a year that has some surprises and some disappointments and i'm looking forward to seeing what 2023 has to offer so guys i hope you enjoyed this list and let me know what your favorite movies of 2022 are in the comments below and as always if you like this review please leave a like and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss a thing follow me on facebook twitter and instagram thank you guys so much for watching my channel throughout this year and i'll see you in 2023